Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a Grand Theft Auto style game in Unity and welcome to episode 26. In this tutorial we're going to add some ambience to our city to make it feel a little bit more atmospheric and we're also going to look at allowing our player to be able to fire his weapon whenever we have it aiming. Don't forget click on that subscribe button and click the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this massive series and everything else on game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So before we actually get into firing our pistol, I actually want to bring in that city ambience and sometimes in video games of this caliber you would have just that ambience to kind of really push the atmosphere of um, in this case a city even if it's some kind of fantasy area or maybe even an enclosed area or some kind of big RPG ambience is so important and we did kind of touch upon it um, some tutorials back when we were working with the intro scene so what I'm going to do is I'm going to my ambience folder in the effects in audio and I'm going to bring in this city amb file which is about six minutes long. You won't be able to get this on my website however I will provide a link either in the description or maybe in a pinned comment of where you can go to get that file. Uh, it'll be this link right here and it will take you to freesound.org and it is a great website for you to download all kinds of different sound clips from. Uh, obviously I don't want to issue this one out on my website because I think it's a good place for you to maybe explore and find some sound effects. Uh, I have cut off the first couple of seconds of this sound clip just to kind of fit in with um, the game that we are developing here but if you want to use the exact same one this is it. If you want to search for a different one by all means you can use whatever you want. So I've brought in that city ambience now and I'm just going to add it to just to a game object just so we have some sound within our city. I'm just going to call it city amb and I'm going to bring it up here to the top just under world mechanics I guess and drag and drop onto there and I'm also going to loop it. Let's press play and just see how that sounds within our city. And see now already it just it's got that atmosphere to it which I kind of like. It feels like it fits and flows a little bit better now. There's something more to it. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. So like I say, probably find different types of ambient uh, sounds or for anything really. But that's just something quick to add a little bit more to our game itself. So. Let's now move on to firing that pistol. Some of you may have already attempted it, some of you may not. There is a little bit of trickery to it and how it all works depending on our animations. But firstly what we need to do is add the uh, firing animation to our player. So if we go to um, the contract killer right there and let's go to where the animations are and I can't remember if I've already extracted this at some point. I may have done because it is already out there. If not, it's it's within that there anyway. And I've already gone ahead and added it to our um, animations here. So yours is probably going to say four. All we need to do is just change it to five and add in that fire underscore one pistol. So now we have that animation there. If you're using the animator component, makes no difference, exact same method, you just need to add the animation to uh, the player itself. So now what we need to do is we need to go to our script which allows us to uh, fire or rather aim our pistol and it's cur currently this one, firing pistol. So let's open this up in Visual Studio. So the way we're going to do this is we are going to basically fire the pistol but we're also going to have to control a couple of things as well so in, in its simplest terms let's get that rolling now and then I'll explain why it won't work as intended so let's do things logically how we think it should be working so we need to actually address this is aiming section here because we can use that to our advantage in a separate if statement in the update method because we can say if we're aiming and we're pressing the left mouse button then we should fire our pistol so if is aiming equals true and then double ampersand because it's 
two statements that we're creating here. So if this and this are true, then do the following. So we just need to say if is aiming is true and input dot get mouse button down and in brackets zero open curly bracket. Remember zero is for the left mouse button. One is for the right mouse button. So we're saying if we're holding the right mouse button because we've got that here and then we're pressing the left mouse button, then we do the following and we could say take this line of code, place it here and then let's take the actual um, animation name. So I'm going to actually copy it rather than type it just so as there are no misspellings. So let's place that into there. Let's also add the sound clip for firing our gun. I know we've got a gun bang sound already, but let's add a new one. So I'm going to go to my effects folder and I'm going to bring in this pistol shot audio clip. And let's add it to the effects folder in sound effects. Let's duplicate gun pickup. Uh, rename that to pistol shot. Let's have it the exact same as the sound clip itself. Drag and drop over there. Next thing, let's add that as a variable. So public audio source and pistol shot semicolon. So let's also play that sound clip. Pistol shot dot play of close bracket semicolon and save. So in its simplest terms, we should be able to do this now. However, when we go to play the actual script, it will half work. And this is a great opportunity for me to explain why it does what it does, because logically that script follows things perfectly and we should be able to play it, but it won't. So let's go to that script itself and just quickly add the pistol shot sound. Let's press play. I do like this ambience. I really think it adds something to the game. It's really nice. So let's head over to that gun and we should be able to still aim. And when we press the left mouse button, we'll see what happens. We should just hear the shot. So, yep, we've got it. Let's aim. Firing. Now, here's another thing we have to address. There we go. Rapid fire. So that is, it's up to you whether you want to keep the rapid fire in, but let's go through why this didn't work. So this didn't effectively work because we're trying to play this animation. However, this animation is already playing. So we have to basically come up with a way of stopping this animation and playing this animation. And we can actually add in another bool here. So public, and I'm actually going to make it static. You'll see why later on. Static bool is firing. Uh, by default, we'll make it equals false. Now, the way we're going to do this now is we're going to have to do this in a coroutine simply because we need to be able to control how quickly we can fire our weapon. So below the update method, we're going to have I enumerator. Let's call it fire the uh, pistol. Oh, close bracket, open curly bracket. And we are going to basically say at this point, um, let's say somewhere here. So we've got is aiming equals true and mouse button. We're now going to say is firing equals true, semicolon. And then we're going to play the sound, play the animation, and then start the coroutine. So start coroutine, and it's going to be fire the pistol, open close bracket, close bracket, semicolon. And in that coroutine, all that's going to contain is waiting for a certain period of time and then reactivating or deactivating, I should say, the is firing variable. So yield, return new, wait for seconds. And in brackets, let's say 0.4 F because it's a decimal semicolon. We'll say is firing equals false semicolon. And hopefully the eagle eyed viewers out there will have noticed that it'll still, it won't do, do anything. It'll still react the same. That's because we need to add an if statement to this section here where we're aiming our weapon. If, and in brackets, is firing equals false, then 
we aim our weapon and close curly bracket and save that script. Now, this will react a little bit differently, but it's still not complete. And this, the reason I'm doing this now to show you it's still not working is because I need to, I really need to stress the intricacy of a lot of these scripts now reacting with each other because there are many different controls that we need to stop and start. Yes, I know there are different ways of doing it. Yes, I know there are probably better ways of doing it, but there are also a heck of a lot of worse ways of doing it. We need to basically get things working as intended. So once again, let's pick up our weapon. We can aim and we can fire. Now you'll notice what's happened there. That's not the animation we want. Why is that not the animation we want? We'll get around to that in a second. We've also stopped a lot of the uh, problems that we do have. Um, you'll notice I did do the rapid firing again there. This is where it comes to the point of actually changing everything about this and moving things into uh, here. But again, it's, it's entirely up to you how you want to deal with it. But for now, let's deal with the fact that we're not playing the correct animation. Now, why do you suppose that is? Why do you suppose this animation doesn't play? Give up. I'm hoping some of you guys got it. In fact, I know some of you guys got it because by now I know you're really good at this. The reason it didn't work correctly is because of char control. Now, if you recall here, we're playing the animation idle under most circumstances. So we now need to add an if statement to contain this section. That's why we had the static in the firing pistol. We need to check if this is false to play this. So if, and in brackets, firing pistol dot is firing equals false, open curly bracket, and then below those two lines, close curly bracket and save. And that is the only reason why it doesn't do it. Because we're trying to, we've stopped, we're not playing the aiming animation, but it's reverting to this. So we can control this with an if statement based on what we're doing inside the firing pistol script. So for the final time, let's press play. I, do, I really do like this ambience. It works really well. I'd love to see what you guys have got up to this point as well. I think it'd be really, really good. So, let's head over to our pistol, pick it up, aim, and fire. Perfect. So, we're well on our way now to actually bringing in a lot of different uh, aspects of this game. And the logical thing to go with now is to deal with our NPCs. What happens when you run up to someone and suddenly aim a gun at them? What do they do? Well, we're going to find out next tutorial because we're going to be dealing with the NPCs and if we start pulling a gun out at them, that's going to be fun. So until that next tutorial, guys, thank you very much for watching.